all good to go. Um, thanks, Stephen. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Florian from the Department of Parks and Wildlife in WEA. Um, I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, today's a short rundown on pyramids, pipelines, and a can of weave. Um, I'm going to come to what that means in a sec. Um, I'm currently building data WA Gov AU. That's the other hat I'm wearing. And um, in real life, I'm a, just a data plumber for the Department of Parks and Wildlife. And uh, with that, I mean, I build information pipelines in this pyramid of data, information, knowledge, and wisdom um, to get the best management bang for the invested scientific research data buck, if that makes sense. And um, today's short rundown is um, some of that automation along those pipelines. So obviously at the foot of this pipeline, a pipeline at the base of our pyramid of data information knowledge wisdom stands, of course, big set of data. Um, that pile of data, of course, lives in a CCAN instance. Um, and this data is somehow, we've, we have raw data that we, that we collect that is and we, of course, have to process and we have to extract the information and make that extraction somehow reproducible and automated. Um, extract the information, present it somehow, annotate it with our knowledge and um, make, that, uh, make that whole process a little bit more transparent, how we got to that annotation, how we got to that insight, and therefore deliver, deliver defensible insight. Um, our game in parks and wildlife is biodiversity conservation. So we handle um, a lot of sensitive data, and we give, um, we give advice, management and policy advice um, to the management of our biodiversity um, assets, like our marine park managers and terrestrial park managers. And we also give advice to the minister. And all that has to be super waterproof, and it has to be, has to be watertight, the advice we give. So therefore, we need to um, deliver defensible insight. Uh, my job, in this whole and uh, this whole data plumbing is to automate the chunks that can be automated and make it easier for us um, with that i'm gonna show you my horrible scribbling on my whiteboard there are four different ways i want to show you today um, how we automate it and starting with the easiest one going to the most complex one uh, for which i have made a template uh, that you can reuse if you see fit um, that's the main product I'm, so to say, selling today or presenting today. Um, but let me first run through the, um, through the simpler bits, if that makes sense. Um, so basically, our primary code equation is that data plus code equals information. And with that, I mean, we have the data, we run it through a script, we process something, we make a figure out of data, we, uh, we visualize data somehow, um, and from, from there, we're going to extract information. Um, this, this, does that make sense? Should we end? Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So in the easiest way, you have a bit of a script, which can be R or Python or any language of your choice um, that will inline code with comments. So the code extraction visualizes information from the raw data, and the comments provide an explanation of the code to the non-coders. And those scripts can be run, rerun, even by people who don't code themselves. And the scope of those scripts are obviously simple jobs, um, little small chunks of work. And the users of those scripts would be scientific programmers who focus on data and code. Second thing is, can you do better? Yes, you can. Live workbooks. Um, a live workbook, and I would like to show an example in a second is essentially um, annotating what a, what a script does with a little bit of context to provide knowledge. And with that, I mean, um, you can either, you, you, have, you have a workbook, which is a live document that inlines a little bit of text with a little bit of code that does something for you. And then you write a little bit of text about the products the code makes. Um, that can be for two examples. That can be for uh, two, basically uh, approaches. One of them would be that the prose that you write explains the code. Um, I do that a lot for myself. If I solve a little problem that is a little bit takes me an hour or two to solve, um, I explain to myself in a year from now what the hell I was doing, so I can still do that. So it's reproducible, 
explains what I'm doing. Second approach is um, it might be, I might be writing a paper or a technical appendix for a paper and that would be nice to just reproduce what I've shown in the paper um, to make the paper reproducible and the research reproducible. Um, therefore, my insight, my pr production pipeline would be defensible. Uh, now, first example, I'm going to show you a live workbook. For example, this here. Um, my until my screen loads in here and it's going to take a while, so I'm trying not to scroll too hectically. This, for example, was a little job um, I had to do. I had to marry up a GeoJSON with a CSV uh, for a colleague. So I started explaining what a little code does, a little bit of code does. Here's a little bit of an explanation. Here's a little bit of code. This workbook is a so-called R Markdown workbook that inlines Markdown um, formatted text with R code. This is R code in the little gray box here. Um, and as a result, you get something. In this case, a GeoJSON, which is a map, and you can zoom in. Okay, I'll wait for a second to load. So that should show on your screens now, and you can see the output. There, for example, this is what, what we're looking at here is a few wetlands inside the Lisieux National Park in Western Australia, uh, little place markers. So that's a live workbook. This workbook um, can be, this is the HTML representation of a workbook, but um, essentially this workbook did a job and explains the job in line, what, what happened. So I'll just jump back here. Um, what happens if you need an application? Um, what if you have um, a separate, a different approach? What if the users are non-technical? What if there are so many different ways of cutting the cheese that not one analysis will do it for all the users? What if you have one input and have many ways of accessing that? In this case, you need an application. That's the third use case. Um, I will show you an application which is written in uh, the technology R Shiny, which is basically a little bit of R code running behind the scenes and a little bit of an application running on the front end. Um, in this use case, I'm going to jump to that. I call that the Seekan Dependency Explorer. So, use case in this um, in this case was. I'm a CCAN developer, and CCAN has how many, ex how many um, extensions? About 130 extensions. Uh, many of those have third-party dependencies, and all of them specify which version of the dependencies they pull in. And every, everyone who will deploy a CCAN with a bunch of, uh, of extensions will run into conflicts that, for example, the requests library. If you try to run CKNext Archiver next to CKNext QA next to CKNext Spatial, Archiver says, I want requests exactly in the version 1.1.0. And Spatial will say 1.1.0. If you run that with IATI, they will say, no, no, I want exactly the version 2.3.0. In this case, you get a problem when you install that, and CKN won't install. So you have to resolve those dependencies. So when I run into this problem, I found there's no way of, of organizing those dependencies because I have to look through 130 plus code repositories um, manually and see for for each extent, uh, dependency that I have need to need to organize that. So I thought there must be a better way. So I wrote a little bit of R code that downloads all 130 of those extensions. That's a job that only has to be done automated once, and then come uh, then extracts all the dependencies and then lists them. So now everyone who, who runs into a problem between dependencies can go to this application and um, look for the dependency they're looking for and see who's using them and then what version it is. So that's basically, and there are so many dependencies and so many different versions and they might update. So there's no way I can process one static product out of it that I need an application that's interactive. So here's my interaction. Of course, you need pros in line. So I have documentation included that explains what this page is doing. Um, again, context, pros, data, and products over here. That was the third use case. Let me jump back to my little application, third use case. Um, 
I would like to show you another use case of that, if we have time for that. Yeah, um, that was actually a totally awesome use case, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was on, the, on the mailing list and even David Reed said that, that was uh, nice. So that was a big compliment coming out of Dave. Um, another use something, case for Something every CCAN development team could use. <laughs> yeah, now I ran into this problem and I thought, I'm not going to com compare all permutations because there are just too many. So it has to be automated. So another application that's more for parks and wildlife. Um, for example, what if, um, an, what if uh, we had a ton of data about something really, really boring, say sea surface temperature, um, seawater temperature, which is very important for people who worry about corals and fish and um, marine communities like us, so it's important for us. Um, what if you have a ton of data and all the data is more or less in the same format and you always have to make the same, have the same job? But there's many ways of cutting this cheese again. So let's look at so um, let's look at this little application, which, for example, loads data from say Rolly Shoals Marine Park that's in in the Kimberleys um, of Western Australia. So the data looks like this. There's can you see that? There's a little bit of temperature, there's the site, and there's a date, and we have a ton of this data. So very simple data, and our job is to plot that. As boring as it is, we have to make this plot. Making this plot is a lot of work if you have to do it a lot of times. So uh, let me group it by site. This will now take about 10,000 data points and group them, make it nice and colored. Look, I've made a nice graph out of it with a few clicks instead of writing this code down here. My application takes an input from my side. Um, let me maybe add a moving average and QCC limits and jump up again. I'm sorry for the blur on your screens. That should clear up in a second. And now you will get, you pick the data set. So this application wraps some, a very tedious and very simple task up. You pick a data set, you choose what you want to plot, you, you choose how you want to plot it, and it makes a figure for you. And then it gives you the figure and it gives you the code. That's cool, but that's not cool enough. So let's give you a button to download the figure and download the code so you can keep it. And with the code, you can rerun it and you can reproduce that figure at any time. Or even better, the data came from CCAN. What about the outputs? They should go back to CCAN. So CCAN should keep the data, the code, and the product together. So what if you have an API key? I'm just mocking something up. Then this application goes, oh, right. There's something that looks like that's the figure, and there's that looks like something that's called the code about this. Now I can upload figure and code back to where it came from. Where it came from, I'm going to show you in a second. I'm not going to press this button because obviously that's not my API key, so that upload is going to fail otherwise. So we have a little bit of an application. Learn more. Here's, of course, the explanation for my users what they are looking at. So that's, that's, um, this is something that's a little bit automated, a little bit made it a little bit shinier than a little bit of code. Some, some of my end users will get scared if you show code to them. Um, okay, last bit. Let's jump back to, to this. What if you have a bigger problem? What if you want to um, provide defensible insight and you have to report it? Maybe what if you have to write an annual report about something that is data-driven? about your roads or your child safety services or about biodiversity asset status. Um, what if your report consists has about 10 authors? What if your report has about 600 figures and all those figures need to live somewhere and all those figures are made from code the way I just showed to you? And what if you have a version problem if people start emailing Word documents of their chapters to each other? In this case, you need something what's called a live document. And this is the product I'm going to introduce to you. I want to introduce to you today. And um, I made a template for this called Canos Weave because it uses data from CCAN and it uses the technology called Sweave, um, which inlines, which uses LaTeX for markup. So you can have all the different kinds of, all crazinesses of markup. And it uses R code to do the heavy lifting. So how does this look? Um, 
let me show you the, um, I'll let you jump to this one here. So this code, I'm gonna show you two versions of that. One is um, a real life example um, that we're using um, at the moment. We got five people working on this. Um, we produce reports. Number eight, if I jump to this, so we, we produce, sorry for the blur again, uh, we produce a list of 12 reports at the moment, um, annually that, that pulls in about 600 figures. All of those figures come from CCAN, are made on CCAN. Um, we have 10 authors at the best of times, and we have to use version control. So this is the output. I'm gonna show you how this is done in real life. I'm gonna have to jump again. So I will take, so we're looking here at an interface at an IDE, um, it's called RStudio Server. Um, this is one report you see here. I'm gonna full screen this. This report combines, as a live document, it combines a little bit of R code, this bit here, with LaTeX. In this case, this includes, one line includes one chapter. So this is a report of about 150 pages or something. And I press one button, compile PDF, out comes a PDF. So this document now compiles itself. And while this is scrolling through, each line that's coming through here, it's gonna be a little bit blurry in your end, is one figure being pulled in from CCAM. Goes and goes and goes, and then in the end, it will compile itself into a PDF. And the technology we're using, Sweeve, um, works in two passes. The first pass is it compiles the R code. Second pass, it compiles the, the LaTeX bit. And the R code we're using in here in line is doing two very, very boring tasks. One is it retrieves figures from CCAM resources. Second thing is it sets a few variables that we're using so that we can reuse chapters. So we set something like the chapter heading for each chapter in one place and then we use the same format everywhere. So while I'm rambling on, this thing is now compiling itself. This will run for about a minute because it's a big document with lots of pictures and figures in it, and out will come a PDF. And while we're waiting for that, um, I will tell you that um, I've made, let me jump to this. Um, I made, I've uh, backwards engineered that into an open source template that you can reuse if you see fit. And the code is on GitHub. I'll give you the link to that in a second. And um, this is, we're looking here at the example. Okay, now the report is done. So what happened here? View, um, full screen. Can we view that? So this is, uh, we're looking here at the report. I'll just need to zoom, automatic zoom fit page. So this is our report. Let's go. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong button. Let's go to the front. So this is the report about the Mami Marine Park, about the biodiversity conservation assets in the Mami Marine Park. Um, I'll jump through the to the table of contents. Here's a nicely laid out table of contents. And we report on things like water quality. Here's a chapter with a nice background image. Sorry for the blur again. And I will jump now to a section where we show figures. So this is how boring life at, at our end can be. Of course, it's not boring. This insight is very interesting, but we show a few figures and these figures are, if we zoom in, here's a figure and this, this figure is a resource coming from CCAM. And um, we embed this with a link to the data back, so I will copy this link that I just made. So I can, if I'm, if I want to, um, to make this uh, this information here defensible and uh, the inside defensible, we link back to the actual data and how we made the data and the metadata on CCAM with this little link here. So we can go back to CCAM. Hang on, I need to load the correct window. Sorry for the blur. And we'll find this is the data set. I'll scroll down. 
here's the figure and here's the code. This is the figures and we will see, this is the metadata, here's our spatial reference, it's the Mami Marine Park of Perth, it's one of the metropolitan marine parks we have here. So, and this is how we link from our reports back to where the data came from. And we have lots of more figures. We have 600 of those figures coming out of CCAM. Uh, this report is written collaboratively by a um, handful of authors, and we all use um, version control, which is supported by the, um, by the IDE we're using to write this report, by our studio. And um, this report is obviously for the use case that we, sorry for the jumping. So this, this use case is, um, Obviously for something, if you need a bigger structure, if you need more complex structure, like a multi-chapter structure, as opposed to the single page you get from a workbook. If you have a more complex layout that you get from LaTeX, um, if you wanna have some typesetting of, um, that is not supported by Markdown, um, if you need collaborative editing under version control by many people in many different places, and um, you have embedded code that does a few things for you. And, um, the and um, basically that's the that's the use case that we used it that we started to, to develop it for at Parks and Wildlife and um, as a second example and the last live example I showed today um, I'll show you the um, the template so the template is an example report that looks very similar to the one we just had just flesh it out a little bit and just have uh, one chapter in there so if I compile this report. This is something you can fork from GitHub for yourself. Um, on Git, uh, the, the README on GitHub has the instructions how to get to this point where you can compile this document for yourself. And uh, while this is running away, this is compiling much faster than the other report because it's smaller. We can see that with basically one button, you can build the whole PDF. And here's an example chapter that shows you, um, you can read through this in your own time uh, in detail and see how the figures are pulled in. Um, this example, this chapter shows how you talk to CCAM and get the figures from CCAM. This is the report we just made. So here's the report title with a nice background image and you can modify the title page, of course, to your own needs. Um, here's a table of contents. Uh, here's an example chapter and here's an example figure. And this figure again comes from CCAN. Here's a link back to CCAN. If we copy this link, go back to CCAN, we find where this comes from. So here's the data, here's example code, and here's the example figure. And that's one of the figures we just used. So, okay, so that's cool. Now we made a report. Now the report sits in here. What do we do with this report? Of course, we want to upload it to some place where the readers and the audience of the report can read it. So what about, we, we upload it onto CCAN, and to do this, you just press another button, build all, which uses some magic I've included behind the scenes, called a make file which knows how to upload itself to a certain place on CCAN, which you can configure to your own CCAN to where it should go. And now it's uploaded. And now the data sits in here. This is the kind of swift example output. And if we load this resource, sorry, it's going to be a little bit blurry. You'll see here's our report. And if I go in here, scroll down, you see that's the report that we just made. So the report just uploaded, it just compiled itself and uploaded itself to the right place. That, that's a tedious task that we have to do every time we, we want to make a fresh version of the reports that's automated, which is nice. And to wrap it all up, you can find all the resources that I showed to you and all the links on our alpha version of data WA go for you, which you can find at catalog dot alpha dot data dot wa go for you if you look for a data set called data wa go for you you find this data set which includes links to the documentation to the code to different demo instances of my service and um, the code for the template for the reporting that i just showed to you 
the example output and the figures that I showed to you, including this figure and including a little bit of an explanation of what I just said. Okay, so that's from my side. That wraps it all up. So that was uh, pretty awesome. And that was a really awesome uh, demo again. When you first did that in Sydney, um, I just thought we had to get this sort of out there because I think there's a lot of use cases where within bureaucracy or even in um, the community, people would like to have these reports created and there's a lot of effort put into whether it's scraping data or analyzing data from open data portals. Um, mm -hmm. There are more use cases where people are doing that from a variety of portals and this sort of platform allows um, you know, community groups to generate reports that can actually be sent through to people that highlight you know, what's going on in their communities um, with their own context to create their own sort of wisdom around what's going on in their communities. So it's not just, a, I guess, an internal publishing platform. It's also a, a platform that can be used by anyone in the community on an open, door, open data platform of like CCAN.